Percutaneous Transluminal Coronary Angioplasty or PTCA. Here is an illustrated review of steps in percutaneous transluminal coronary angioplasty of left anterior descending coronary artery. This is the coronary angiogram showing total occlusion of left anterior descending coronary artery. LMC is the left main coronary artery. LCX is left circumflex coronary artery. And LAD is short for left anterior descending coronary artery. LAD stump is seen after the diagonal branch. Please subscribe to this channel for future updates. Click on the subscribe button. Press the bell icon after that for all updates. Guide wire is cautiously passed across the total occlusion, taking care that it does not produce a false lumen. If the wire is able to pass back and forth easily into multiple side branches, we can be sure that the wire is in the true lumen. There should not be any contrast staining or extravasation with check shots of angiogram. Balloon is passed over the guide wire and inflated and deflated with an indeflator. Indeflator is an inflation deflation device with a pressure monitor to check the pressure generated inside the balloon. Patient status and ST segment on the ECG monitor are watched during inflation, though no change is likely while inflating a total occlusion. If it was a near total occlusion or tight stenosis, there is a high chance of ST shift and angina or even hypotension or arrhythmia during balloon inflation, especially if the inflation is prolonged. The balloon is then deflated and removed slowly from the coronary artery and then the catheter. Negative pressure is applied continuously. Take care not to displace the guide wire while removing the balloon with the catheter in situ. Check angiogram after balloon dilatation of LAD shows good flow throughout the extent of LAD and also visualizing the side branches. Now the vessel is ready for stent insertion after measuring the size of the lesion that is the length and the diameter. If the lesion is not fully expanded after initial balloon dilatation, serial dilatation with different sizes of balloon may be used with due precautions to avoid vessel injury like dissection and perforation. In some cases, if the lesion is calcified, rotablation using the diamond bar of a rotablator may be needed for preparing the stending. Inadequate lesion preparation often leads to incomplete stent apposition, enhancing the risk of stent thrombosis and symptomatic restenosis. The balloon mounted stent is inserted over the guide wire. Position of stent is confirmed by check angios on fluoroscopy. The stent balloon is inflated to the rated nominal pressure and sometimes even beyond that level, taking care not to exceed the rated burst pressure. The stent balloon is deflated and then removed under negative suction. Check angio after stent expansion shows good TIMI3 flow and the stented segment stands out as a slight bulge in the vessel profile at the distal end. The bulge is because of the natural tapering of the vessel from the proximal to distal portion of the stent. If the stent is not fully expanded, serial post dilatations with non-compliant balloons are given. Use of intravascular ultrasound is beneficial in recognizing good stent apposition. Use of intravascular ultrasound to assess stent apposition is desirable in critical positions like the left main coronary artery as incomplete apposition leads to suboptimal lumen improvement and enhances the potential for catastrophic stent thrombosis. Please don't forget to subscribe to this channel for future updates and click on the bell icon for all updates. Thank you.